Hi everyone, welcome back. Today I've got a few hours spare so I'm going to try and make a new row of French cleats for this utility room. You may have seen in previous videos that I'm using this pegboard here and it's a really nice system but I was going to buy a few more sheets of it and I saw that actually the price of those things have jumped up so much from a few years ago when I bought it. For just three sheets of that it's now going to cost me about £70-£80 pounds. and you can see this this French cleat that I've put up here, it doesn't look pretty, it's just made from scrap wood and I literally put it together in about half an hour. But yeah, made from scrap wood so it's practically free. And I really do love this French cleat system. In the future I am going to be moving hopefully most of my stuff into a workshop that I'm going to be building down the end of the garden. I'll be using French cleat in that shed so therefore I thought I might as well just put a temporary French cleat system up on this wall so then I can just move it over when that thing is built. And also uh, I'll show you a few of the new tools that I bought in the last few weeks to kind of help me do this work. I've been doing a little bit of DIY at home as well so that's why we got some tools to just make my life much much easier. So let's go outside and first of all I need to cut up the plywood sheet and we're just going to cut a few strips of plywood and I'm going to make this, I think it's about 100 mil, cut it at a 45 degree bevel. So uh, I'll get two rows in here. And then also I'm going to be using um, some interesting fixings into this wall. Now I've never used them before and they are aircrete anchor fixings. You can see I was drilling a few holes here because I thought that this was going to be, because it sounds pretty hollow, I thought it was just going to be plasterboard. Uh, this wall here is plasterboard and I used the hollow cavity fixings to fix all of this stuff on this wall. I was drilling into this and basically it just went like a hundred mil deep, what seemed like just plasterboard. It was like a hundred mil thick plasterboard, which didn't seem right. So I asked around and it seems like this, this wall is probably made from aerated concrete blocks, which are really, really crumbly. It's literally the same as just drilling plasterboard, which kind of makes sense as to why when I drilled it first, I thought I was just going through pure plasterboard. These fixings are really interesting because you just drill a hole and then you literally just hammer them in. And it feels like you're, you're just gonna kind of break the wall when you're doing it. But so far I've put two up on, on this uh, French cleat here and it seems to be holding it pretty well. So I'll show you them as well because they're quite interesting. I've never seen them before. So you just saw me uh, using my new circular saw. This is cordless. This is the Dewalt 54 volt flex volt one. This is the DCS 579. So I was thinking of getting a plunge saw. I kind of wish I did now because you know, doing it on the floor, getting started on this thing, especially if you're doing it with the track and you're trying to do like bevel cuts, it is a little bit of a pain in the ass. A plunge cut saw would have been 10 times easier. You know, for a cordless one, which I always want cordless, it's six, 700 pound. This was, I think this was under 300 pound. And these circular saws, now they are compatible with the routes. It does kind of work like a, a plunge saw, which is really nice. So that's why I got one that was compatible with, with the rail. I bought a Dewalt rail as well. And yeah, it, it works nicely. It's got enough power, definitely. These 54 volt, this is a nine amp one. I think this is the biggest one they do. Definitely got enough power. And also what I like about it is that you can use it on your other tools, which is uh, always beneficial. They uh, do go down to 18 volt, which is pretty cool. But you may notice as well that I'm wearing something a little bit different. This is the, uh, these are the Carhartt Rugged Flex. I basically wear my normal house clothes when I'm doing all this work and I was just getting sick and tired of ruining them. So I just got some dedicated overalls. These are really, really cool. I've never worn overalls or a tool belt or anything like that. And I just love the fact that you can kind of like just hold things in in so many different pockets what i also like about it is that they are they are stretch they are thick cotton but they're also stretch which is good because you know you can kind of like you can lunge and you can squat down also they've got um built-in knee pads as well and i was always bashing my knee and i actually injured my knee recently because i walked into something and i bashed the edge of my knee onto it while i was working and for months i've been walking up and down the stairs 
and I've been uh, hearing some like creaking in my knee. I went to a physio and it turned out that basically I had a load of scar tissue from when I banged it and that had just basically kind of like locked up my kneecap a little bit. So PPE is really important. Just yesterday I almost stepped on a nail and put my foot through it. So I'm also going to be buying some Kevlar like steel toe cap work shoes as well because I've dropped things on my, on my feet and almost broken my toes with things as well. So yeah, I really need to get better at like health and safety and PPE it is so important. So next uh, we've cut the we've cut the edges. I need to sand these down because they are razor sharp. That d blade is a really, really nice blade and it cuts such a fine edge. Very nice cut on it. So I'm gonna sand this down and then we will uh, get out the laser level, which is a new tool that I bought and we will put this up on the wall. And what was I just saying about PPE? Uh, I just picked up the bevel edge of that <laughs> thing I just cut and I managed to slice my finger. So yeah, time to put some gloves on. So here's another tool that I got uh, this week and this has probably been the best thing that I've bought. Just this weekend, because of this, I think we ended up putting up like nine shelves onto the wall. This is a uh, Hoopa laser level and this thing is brilliant. Let me show you uh, it set up. So uh, the pole is separate. This is the Bosch pole. So this is the first thing that I bought and we was putting up shelves and I was just using my tripod to, to basically stable it. That will quickly become a right pain in the ass because when you're walking over the floor, the floorboards are moving this thing and it was any sort of movement and it shakes the line. You're best to just get a dedicated laser pole. This was, I think, about with, uh, there was a discount on Amazon at the time and it was about £190. This pole was £63 additional, but honestly, just make the investment because it's just such a good setup that this saves so much time and it just makes doing this type of DIY a joy. It actually makes it fun. All you do is you just bolt this in to here. Also this bracket that comes with the Hoopa laser, um, it's actually got a magnetic back. So you could like stick it to there for instance. I did put it on there for that initial one. Yeah, just turn it on and there you go. So it's so cool. You can, you can move this up and down. You can move this to where you want it. This bracket itself, uh, it's got loads of adjustments so you can adjust like the height of it here you can lock it in and you can like move this backwards and forwards you can like twist this around so you can get it to just basically exactly where you want just having a laser line if you've never used it before and you've like put up shelves you know how annoying it is to do it all the shelves that i put up previously in this house were without a laser level and this is the first time i've used a laser level and yeah i should have bought it years ago i'm never gonna install anything without using a laser level. It is amazing. Anyway, let's get the holes drilled into this wall and I will show you how to put in these uh, fixings. So these are the fixings, uh, Fisher 50491. And you can see they're just like nylon plugs here, basically. Uh, they do expand and as you hammer it in, it twists itself into the aerated brick. So all you need to do is you just drill an eight millimeter hole and then you basically just hammer it in. So we'll do that now. It's not pretty, you do kind of damage the plaster around it, but it's flush with the wall. From what I can tell, that ain't going anywhere. Putting in this fixing over here, I ended up actually kind of basically cracking the wall. I thought I was going to put a massive hole in it as I was hammering in the uh, the fixing, but I could probably put three in here and it'd be super solid. But I mean, that ain't going anywhere. And I'm only going to be hanging, you know, pretty lightweight tools up on the wall for now. When I move into uh, the shed. These things will all be fixed into the uh, into the battens, so it'll be 10 times more sturdier. So thank you for following me today while I did this. I'll put links to all of these new tools that I've bought so far. I really like them, but I do have one issue. 
and it's with these Carhartt overalls. This strap, over time it just starts to slip down. And I find myself always having to pull them up, but actually I realized that it's because this strap keeps on coming down. So I've read that other people did have issues with these straps kind of falling down. I'm not sure if there is kind of like a hack or a fix to stop it from happening, but if anyone does own these, they wear them and yeah, they've got ways to improve it please do let me know in the comments below. I hope everyone is having a nice summer. Remember to like and subscribe and I'll catch you later.